Hello and welcome to Out of the Dark Room on Adorama TV. I'm Ruth Medjwer and today Seamus Travers is going to be chatting to me about his very interesting processing techniques. Seamus, thanks again for joining me. Um, so tell me a little bit, if you will, about what cameras you use, because I'm going to assume that you've got a lot of cameras. I have everything from 100 year old cameras for certain projects to modern day digital. The images I'd shot in Turkey, was they were shot digitally. And um, like for my digital cameras, it's a D8, Nikon D800. And as a backup, I use a D700 as backup. And then I use a, a 24 to 120 f4 lens. And, but I, I really prefer using prime lenses. Yeah. So oftentimes with the zoom lens, I, I just find like, it, it's great for shooting a wedding. Mm. But for, again, when I'm doing street with my camera, I usually use a 35 mil f2. Uh, prime lens or uh, a 50 mil 1.4. Yeah, so you just you kind of like wide and fast and yeah. to go for it. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes I even use a fisheye as well. Sometimes. Do you? So, yeah. yeah, I love a bit of fisheye. Now, yeah. I have to say. Um, tell me then about you mentioned there your vintage cameras. So mm. is that for your 1916 project? Yeah, yeah. Of course, for the for anyone that's watching that maybe doesn't know the 1916, we had a, a hundred year centenary yeah. in Ireland celebrating. Um, our state. So mm. well, tell us a little bit about that project and why you decided to use a 100, 100 year old camera. Yeah, uh, how it was originally um, someone had approached me, um, they wanted to do like an exhibition and they wanted me for 1916 when we had a revolution to document some of the sites with it and all these sites have been well documented and I, I was trying to come up with a twist or something different. I just started really researching and even the First World War as well, I was big into World War One, So I was researching how was it documented, what was the cameras people used back then. Mm. And then I started thinking, well, why don't I, st are those cameras still usable? And at first I didn't think it was possible because I remember um, I was in this old like charity shop and I, I saw this like box camera, mm. opened it up and it had, you know, the date on it, manufactured February 1916. I got bought it for 10 euros. And I remember then I went out, put a roll of film through it, and I didn't think it would work. And then when I developed the film, I was like, oh my God, there's actually, you can get, it works. Im yeah, you can get images out of it. And I didn't think it was possible. So I started collecting cameras from the First World War. Wow. That's a really nice, you know, it's a nice way of documenting something and tying it all together, the history of it. Mm. Um, tell me a little bit then about, so you obviously do your own processing, your mm. rolls and your printing. So do you have a dark room? I, I rent a portrait studio and, uh, to do commercial work but in the back of it uh, there was an old dark room and originally I was going to clear out the dark room because there was a stage in 2008-2009 where I stopped shooting film and it was a real damp room and I thought oh god it'd be, it's too much work so I just left the enlargers there and then I'm really glad I didn't clear it out because I've really now nearly all my personal work would be shot on film so all my black and white I, I process and develop myself and print. Um, C41 colour I get done in the lab. Of course. Because uh, of difficulty. And plus with the climate and temperature in Ireland. It's, it's really tricky to process colour as well. So. Yeah. That's brilliant that you do your own printing and everything. Mm. And then um, how do you, do you scan then um, to get it up online? Uh, yeah, like um, there's two ways I do it. Like I've got a Nikon um, Cool Scan 9000 that I'd scan either 35 mil or medium format. Mm. Um, a lot of times I'd, I'd do a darkroom print in an enlarger and then I'd scan the print. Okay. Uh, and even at the minute, uh, what I've set up is I've got my Nikon D800 and I have a light box. Yeah. And I then turn the light box into a scanner where I photograph the negatives. Oh, amazing. And then invert them. And uh, that, I, I usually use that for like just contact proofing. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. Mm. And then I've noticed, I've been snooping on your Instagram, that mm. you've used some really strange post-production techniques to the prints and stuff. Did I see uh, a cup of tea being involved? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like everything to... to because a lot of the, uh, in the 19th century, like um, they'd actually sustain the, the prints with nicotine and stuff. So I try whatever way to kind of, I use all sorts of alternative toners and like a, a regular like photo speed toner. Yeah. Um, and then I, I use alternative toners and. Like tea. <laughs> yeah. And, and like a lot of, a lot of the old cameras I use, they don't make the film anymore. Mm. 
so I have to make my own film. Wow. So um, a lot of times like you take a regular 120 medium format roll and you get a cigar cutter and you cut it to the size yeah. uh, and then you have to spool it in the dark yeah. um, and you get one roll then into that camera. And a lot of times um, like the stereoscopic uh, 3D camera I have, Yeah. Um, again they don't make the film anymore so I have these like, it's, it works like large format photography where you have these plates but they're like panoramic. So what I do, again, you have to do it all completely in the dark. So you have to get a guillotine and you get like large format sheets of film and in the dark you slice it down into the size and it's measured on the guillotine. And you have to do it without chopping off your fingers. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and so you're just measuring things by feel and then lining it up and chopping yeah. it and hoping you haven't chopped like a an egg in half. Like. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> so that's mm -hmm. for a project that you're actually going to exhibit in the next couple of weeks, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And then tell me, because uh, I'm not really too familiar with that process or mm. the gear or anything like that. Um, how, do, how, do, how do the viewers view it? The people viewing the exhibit, like the stereoscopic imagery, like people have to uh, view with 3D glasses. Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of people think 3D is a modern thing, but it's actually from the 1860s. It's, it's a 19th century invention, stereoscopic 3D. And even the way 3D cinema works, it works on the same principle, where it's basically just two images filmed eye distance apart. Wow. And then viewed when you, with the prism slightly offset, uh, it creates the illusion of 3D and depth. Like your brain fuses the two images together and it has the illusion of 3D. And um, like with the exhibition, people will be viewing it with 3D glasses. Um, because I, I find now, particularly with the internet and Instagram, a lot of things are just scrolled through oh, yeah. and the, the physical print or the physical image is kind of left behind while with this people will have to be physically there to view or get the images with the 3D glasses. Yeah. Everything's quite tactile isn't it in your mm. work, you love like, bringing images to people mm. and one other thing that I've noticed that you do which I find fascinating and also might be is quite historical as well is it's colorizing mm. pictures by hand. Is that, your, is that your animation background coming into play? Yeah, I, I think it could be because that was actually one of my first jobs was like getting cells, drawings of cells and I'd paint in cells of um, animation and cartoon characters. And again, when, when I was researching photography in the 1910s, there was colour photography back then, but Ireland was a very poor country. So going through the archives, no one was really shooting colour back then in Ireland. And so I just thought, like when I was looking through these archives, you know, a lot of black and white prints were, the colour was painted in by hand, so I thought to recreate the effect, I started doing it myself. It's really powerful. It's really mm. great. It's, it's much better than an Instagram filter when you do it yourself by hand and it's really vivid. Mm. Thank you so much for talking me through all your gear and your processes. It was fascinating. Cheers, thanks. Um, best of luck with it all. Thank you. Grand, thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Well, that's all we have for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave them below. I do enjoy hearing your feedback. If you'd like to brush up on your own photography skills, then check out the Adorama Learning Centre. And if you want to watch more videos, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon.